We are back with more Ahuvia, and more is coming to us from uh, RSA Security, uh, Security Division of EMC, and this is the Fraud Action uh, Labs, uh, Research Labs, over in Israel. This is uh, a part of RSA uh, that they've given us uh, a little bit of insight to. Uh, we can't find out everything that's go going on over there, but this is, this is the, the research arm of RSA where they look at all the, the malware and, you know, uh, some of the different traffic that's going on around the network and they try and examine it and give us uh, some analysis about what's going on. So, uh, more uh, thanks, thanks for hanging in with us uh, during the commercial. And um, let's get into the Kahito is or Kahilo uh, botnets. Am I am I mashing that? Right. I'm just going to briefly touch on that before um, um, I go into a, a bit of a broader topic. Sure. The Kahilo botnet was uh, another major uh, botnet that was taken down um, during 2011. Um, again, thanks to Microsoft. Um, it was run with uh, 20. Sorry, 40,000 infected systems, which were responsible for blasting out um, about 4 billion, spam, 4 billion spam emails every day. So these are huge numbers. Um, and, uh, and you know, as far as we were talking about, you know, international cooperation, the, um, a provider of um, domains in the Czech Republic uh, was the, basically the culprit that Microsoft went after. Um, they hosted uh, the domains responsible for controlling the botnet. Um, so that has uh, ended um, not long ago. So um, is that something that they knowingly did, a, a government entity knowingly did? Um, well, uh, Microsoft did drop charges against the providers, so it seems that they were exploited. Uh, basically, they, they, there was some sort of um, uh, it seems exploit that involved using their free subdomain. So it seems that they were just uh, unwittingly exploited. It doesn't seem like they had a hand in, in all of that operation, and therefore the the drops were uh, sorry, the, the charges were dropped against them. All right. So um, there was there was, it, it wasn't airtight. There was enough room for for the government entity to say, "Oops, we didn't know." And, and you have to understand that you know many you know providers, uh, domain registration providers do do provide free registration services and. They can be easily taken advantage of. You know, not not everybody can have their finger on the pulse, and not you know, when you have hundreds and thousands of domains, you know, under operation, you don't necessarily know what's going on with uh, each and every one of them. So until a security vendor like RSA comes and says, "Hey, you know, um, we sent you a cease and desist letter because um, you know your domains are um, infringing our our customers' brand or or stealing money," you know, right. but those providers will. will be aware of that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, you know, um, and them, we're, we're not we're not getting to bulletproof uh, hosting, but generally. No, but you know, you know, you know I. I'd, I'd be willing to go out on the limb here and say that we will move to bulletproof hosting if it becomes an issue. Um. Well, that that, that you know, fraudsters do have that option. Um. It does cost them more than um, you know regular hosting. Yep. So that's kind of a deterrent, but you you know, bulletproof you know services are out there, and you know, they they have contacts with, with you know shady people higher above. So yeah, yeah I know there's there's always the money threshold, uh, and and if somebody has enough money, uh, you know they can do you know pretty much whatever they want. And they can, they can spend you know you know thousands if not millions or billions to hide themselves. I, I I realize that I'm you know you know I'm just thinking that if 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 the host if hosting becomes a, a major international issue, um, you know, and not that it isn't already. <laughs> All right, and, and I say that kind of tongue in cheek. But if this becomes such a pest out there. Um, that it, you know, it's ripping through everybody's uh, front office. You know, I'm, I'm just thinking sooner or later somebody is going to say, yep, we're, we're going to have to, you know, either turn up the heat on this or flip the switch and, and turn a lot of these hosting companies off, you know, until they meet a certain threshold and just make it that much more difficult for, uh, you know, for them to be in business. 
Yeah, that, that, that would be helpful if um, hosting providers were held accountable um, for the kind of content they host. That, that, that would be, uh, you know, something that would probably uh, raise the threshold of security. Uh, you know, I, I believe that I, today that's not really the case. No, not prob until, probably not. Not until, they're, not until they're, they become aware of, of um, whatever they're hosting, and that could take, you know, an, an, that, that could mean that an outsider has to come and tell them exactly what they're hosting. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hear you more. Uh, you know, it, it, it may be a bit of a stretch, but, you know, if, if any of this becomes um, a major, I, I don't even want to say a major issue because it already is a major issue, but if, if it, you know, if there's a significant uh, amount of international heat put on, on some of this, you'd be surprised how quickly things can change. You know, it's just a matter of everybody complaining about it. And I'm sure there's, you know, people on both sides of the issue um, that may be benefiting either directly or indirectly from it. So, uh, you know, it, it's probably a long time in coming. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. All right. Um, so that was Maura Huvia, everybody. And uh, she's from the... Uh, RSA Security Division of EMC, and thank you, more. We appreciate it. We'll uh, we'll talk to you next week. Thank you very much. All right, bye now. All right, um, so um, you know it, it's it's kind of an interesting issue, and you know I probably put her on the spot a little bit, and I, I really shouldn't have, 